Alright, this is a strengthening material video by Nick Manning and John Hepburn. To understand to strengthen material, first you got to understand elastic and plastic deformation. Elastic deformation is when the atoms in a material are put under enough stress that the bonds between them stretch. But when the stress is removed, they return to the same position. On the other hand, plastic deformation, the stress is applied is so great that the bonds between them in simple terms break. And then when the stress is removed, the atoms don't return to the same position. So then we come to strengthening materials. To strengthen material, the idea is you've got to increase the yield stress. The yield stress is the point that plastic deformation first occurs. Before that, there's just elastic deformation and it can, the material can return to its original spot. Now there's three different kinds of materials. Metals, ceramics, and polymers. So the first material we'll be talking about is metals. In metals, the atoms are arranged in an organized pattern like this, with planes that when put under enough stress will slip. So that when the stress is removed, they are plastically deformed and don't return to the same position. Now, to strengthen metals, the idea is you want to stop these slips from happening. Now, there are several ways to do this. Some examples are cold working. The idea behind cold working is you plastically deform the material so that when you put it under the load that in the work environment that you want, when the stresses applied and plastic deformation occurred, let's say this is the plastic deformation you required, you applied and created, and then the, this is the one from the material in the work environment, the plain slip can't propagate, making it so that the slip is stronger, the material stronger. In grains, it's the same kind of thing, small grains, is by creating more grain boundaries, you give, there's more places for the slip to get caught on. Solid solution hardening is an example, well, example in the real world would be steel. So let's say these are the iron molecules and these are the carbon molecules. The slip would want to occur on here, and it can't, like these bonds break, the, the carbon atoms bonds keep a, the material together. The second kind of material we're going to talk about is ceramics. Ceramics are brittle, meaning there's minimal plastic deformation, and when they're, there's a stress applied, they practically go straight from elastic deformation to failure, meaning they break. In ceramics, failure takes the form of cracking, cracks. So when we want, we're going to talk about um, strengthening ceramics, we want to stop cracks from forming and stop existing cracks from spreading. So. For methods of strengthening ceramics, the first one is compression. An example of this is when we pour concrete for concrete structures. We pour the concrete and then we will put a bar of rebar through the concrete and apply uh, tension to either end so it's being pulled out. And when the concrete dries and hardens, we get rid of the applied tension and so this bar is now compressing. It's squeezing back to where it, it wants to go back to where it was before we pulled it apart. And that puts this whole structure under compression. This um, stops cracks from forming and spreading because cracks form under tensile stress. And there will be less tensile stress because the whole thing is under compression. The second method of strengthening in ceramics is filling in existing cracks. This stops the existing cracks from spreading more. The third method is surface treatment. We smoother surface 
um, makes it harder for a crack to start to form because there's no point on the smooth surface to make an obvious crack but if you have a rough surface there's already a gap say here or here for a crack to begin forming because it's already split or here but here there's no obvious spot and it's harder to form cracks another method of strengthening would be additional sintering so sintering is when say we take grains of sand make like make them really really hot and then they'll fuse together so initially maybe the grains will be fused together and like this and a crack could easily form in this gap right here say here or here because there's a gap for it to get to and additional sintering would fuse the grains to more so maybe they're like this and there's just a little hole here and it's not as easy for a crack to form because there's no longer a big gap the third material we're going to talk about is polymers. Polymers are made up of many little repeat units uh, shown by these little red circles on my paper and they are connected to each other and they form big strings and um, there's many strings, there's some here, here and either side and they all form a big clump together and um, the adjacent strings are bonded together by van der Waals bonding which is a weak form of it's secondary bonding and it's a weak bond but that's what holds the neighboring strings together so deformation of polymers occurs when these strings are separated under say under tension like this the uh, van der Waals bonds would be broken and the strings are separated and that's plastic deformation so to strengthen polymers we want to avoid um, these strings from separating and sliding so we make the bonds between the neighboring strings like here and here and here stronger make the bonds stronger the methods of doing this include well the first one is stretching the strings so we stretch so say we have strings arranged like this and we stretch them like this and this but not enough so that it breaks the bonds up here and plastically deforms it like this. But we just stretch them so that they're now clumped closer together and so here versus here is closer together. So there's stronger van der Waals bonds between the neighboring atoms because they're closer together. And they're lined up better, say here and here and here and here versus here and here and it's all curved so they're not lined up as well. So this causes stronger um, bonds between neighboring strings. Another way of strengthening polymers is cross-linking. So cross-linking looks like this. So we have our repeat units, just like the picture up here. And these little red dots are the repeat units. So cross-linking is we introduce um, a new little string of repeat units in between the neighboring string polymer strings so that the the neighboring strings are bonded together stronger because these repeat units are a lot stronger than the weak van der Waals bonds that were initially there so this um, strengthens polymers because they will be harder to pull apart and completely separate and plastically deform because these bonds are stronger than these van der Waals bonds